Today's lesson is focused on the subject of multiple offers, or as many people like to refer to it as the bidding war, an issue for all sellers and purchasers to consider in today's robust real estate market, in a subject which is getting a lot of media attention. From the seller's perspective, the best position, list your home, state a date for accepting offers, and bingo. If the property is well priced, meaning if it is priced 10 to 20% below recent sales in the neighborhood, it should generate enough buzz to create the perfect multiple offer scenario. Of course, other factors do come into play, such as the location of the property, the condition of the property, is the home well appointed, does it show well, just to name a few. It sounds perfect, right? Get the purchasers competing with each other, let each one try to outdo the other, and let the market decide. Sorry if it was only that simple. Unfortunately, there has been some unscrupulous sellers, not to mention realtors out there, who have through very creative means created, for lack of a better word, the illusion, or some may say the impression of a multiple offer situation, when indeed none existed. As a result, some purchasers have complained and their complaints have been heard far and wide. Certainly I know I have been in some very well orchestrated multiple offer situations and I sit there wondering, is that person or that couple truly a prospective purchaser with a bona fide offer? Or are they the seller's cousin or realtor's friend there to add color and frenzy to an already highly stressed situation? The fact is, if you are a purchaser in a multiple offer situation, you never truly know who you are competing against, or to put it in a more simple way, whether the offers on the table are truly genuine or there to assist in pushing up the sale price. Now remember, a seller could have 50 offers, all well over the listed price, and they are under no obligation to accept any offer, despite how attractive the offer or offers are. After all, put yourself in the seller's position. We are now turning the table. How would you like to be told that you must accept a particular offer, even though you know in your heart of hearts, with a little bit more exposure for your property, you may be even able to get an additional $100,000. In my opinion, the bottom line is, as long as we exist in a seller's market, there will be multiple offer situations. The only difference may be the terms under which the offers are being presented. Will all offers have to be open, on the table, for everyone to see? We have not reached that point, but in my opinion, it will not eliminate the dubious seller or realtor from creating false offers. Because where there is a will, there is a way, and greed is a great motivator when it comes to creative selling methods. The fact is, in my opinion, the purchaser, at the end of the day, is always bidding against themselves. Many people do not want to hear this reality, but in my opinion, it is the truth. A purchaser either decides if they want to engage in a multiple offer scenario or not. They either set a specific price in their mind that they are willing to live with prior to entering a bidding war or they enter the bidding war with no specific threshold. With either approach, sometimes it works and other times it may not. At the end of the day, the purchaser must always look at themselves in the mirror and make a decision. They don't ask the seller for permission to make the offer, they ask themselves for permission. And this is why I say they bid against themselves. My approach is a buyer's realtor is to strongly recommend to the purchaser to set a price limit in their mind prior to entering the world of the multiple offer or simply avoid the multiple offer scenario altogether. After all, a bidding war is a pressure cooker and one that can leave a horrible bitter taste in one's mouth. Of course, the following question that I often get in these pressure cooker moments when a purchaser does decide to enter into a bidding war, are we paying too much above market? A fair enough question, and often in the vast majority of circumstances, yes, you are paying above market. The result? Offers in today's real estate market increase as does prices. Is this a bad thing? Not necessarily, but it can be disconcerting for a first-time homeowner attempting to buy into the property market. The question should be, what is the alternative? Prices remaining stagnant? Obviously not. I think we can all agree that this is not a good option for a growing economy. The issue, in my opinion, is one of balance and patience. Do not get caught up in the moment. 
carefully consider your financial circumstances and put into perspective your lifestyle. Do you want to work 60 hours per week just to pay the mortgage? If you have children or are planning to start a family, is the added financial commitment within an acceptable tolerance level? Weighing the pros and cons can be stressful, but also cathartic, allowing you, the purchaser, to refocus your priorities. Now let's switch back to the seller. I am now the listing agent working on behalf of the seller. My job is clear. Maximize the selling price with the best terms for my client to their benefit. Okay, so the multiple offer scenario seems like the perfect situation. List low, stage perfectly, crank up the pressure, get the frenzy going, and sell, sell, sell. In the perfect world, it may sound perfect, but there is no perfect world, and situations are always changing, and the market is fluid. Under certain circumstances, holding back offers till a certain particular day may not always be the best strategy. You don't always know what property is going to come onto the market at the last moment to steal your thunder. You also may miss out on a very good bully offer. Just like listing too high in certain circumstances can be the kiss of death, so too can listing too low. My rule of thumb, market right equals listing smart. At Red Tiger, we believe a measured response is always necessary. If we are working on behalf of the purchaser, we believe it is crucial to be the consummate objective voice, negotiating in your best interest, but also assisting you in the check and balance exercise. As the seller's agent, we also see our role as the consummate objective voice, examining the market, marketing the property, and negotiating the best terms and price for you, our client. If you're considering selling or purchasing a property, please contact us at Red Tiger Realty, your first choice for your real estate needs.